now see here in the previous class i have shown you some multiple types questions in vectors i have shown you about 26 questions and i have also shown you the answers so probably i hope that you have tried all these questions and those students who were able to get the answers for all the questions they can skip this particular class they can directly go to the next class so in this class i will be discussing the answers for some of the problems so those who have doubts only in the last few questions they can directly go to the next class and they can skip this class okay look at the question again one by one i will be discussing one by one all the questions and some of these questions have come out of the one of the special cases which i have discussed in the past and if you are able to make out you can solve faster otherwise also you should be able to answer from basic method see the question number 1 a boat covers the distance between two points in a river 3 hours downstream and 4 hours upstream a floating body in the river crosses these two points in four options are given now i am going to discuss this question come on look at the solution of this question mm -hmm. See the solution of the question number one in the multiple choice questions. Here, T one is the time taken to travel downstream between two points, and T two is the time taken to travel upstream. We are asked to find the time taken to travel from one point to another by a floating body. We ask it to find the time taken to travel by the floating body. So one of the special cases I discussed in the past. If T1 is the time for the same distance, if T1 is the time taken for downstream, and T2 is the time taken for upstream, then the time taken to travel the same distance downstream with the speed of water is given by 2 T1 T2 by T2 minus T1. Here T1 is three hours. T2 is four hours. So you get the answer as 24 hours. So that's the answer. but some of you may not remember this particular conclusion which i have already discussed in the past in one of the special cases therefore i would like to also solve the problem by using the basic reasoning that if a body moves with constant velocity that magnitude of the velocity can be written as magnitude of the displacement divided by time interval let a and b denote the two points let u denote the magnitude of the velocity of flow of water let v denote the speed of the boat in still water let v denote the speed of the boat in still water in the first case it moves downstream from a to b say distance f in time t1 moves downstream is direction of the motion of the boat is same as the direction of the velocity of the river water here u is the magnitude of velocity of the river water which is flowing from point a to point b and v represents magnitude of velocity of the boat relative to water 
or you can say v is the speed of boat in still water so magnitude of the resultant velocity is equal to magnitude of the displacement by time so here magnitude of the resultant velocity when it moves downstream can i be plus c that you can write s by t1 the second case it moves upstream means it travels back from b to a that means in the second case direction of the motion of the boat is opposite to the direction of the flow of river water or you can say v bar and u bar act in opposite directions therefore magnitude of the resultant velocity of the boat means magnitude of the velocity of the boat with respect to stationary observer on the ground will be v minus u this is the direction of v so same distance is covered with velocity of magnitude v minus u in time t2 to find the time taken by the floating body to travel the same distance you have to find the value of u that is speed of river water so you subtract the equation 2 from equation 1 to find the value of u because the floating body moves in the direction of the flow of water with the same speed u with which water is flowing v plus u minus of v minus u Well, that's seen to one by t one minus one by t two. So, if t is the time taken by the floating body to travel the same distance, then for the floating body you can write s equal to u into t. you can substitute the value of u from this equation here you can simplify this to find u on the left hand side you get 2u here to u equal to s into t2 minus t1 by t1 t2 next you can substitute the value of u from this equation on the right hand side of this equation you get u equal to s by 2t1 t2 into t2 minus t1 into t this is the value of u we have substituted it from here to here if you simplify this you get the same conclusion which i have directly written in the beginning then you can substitute the values of t1 and t2 to get the answer <clears throat> if you want to copy the solution of the problem you can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem then see the next question after this question now look at the second question a boat takes two hours to travel 8 km and back in still water lake the velocity of the water is 4 km per hour the time taken for going upstream of 8 km and coming back is so we are given the alternative choice option you can see on the board so i am going to now give, discuss the solution for this let v denote the speed of boat in still water and u denote the velocity of river water so let u denote the speed of the river water
speed of boat in still water i denote it by b it is given that the boat travels 8 kilometers and back in 2 hours that means it travels 8 kilometers and back means 8 plus 8 kilometers in 2 hours it means it travels 8 plus 8 or 16 kilometers in 2 hours So speed of boat in still water is equal to distance covered in still water by time taken. That comes out to be eight kilometer per hour. You are asked to find the total time taken by the boat to travel eight kilometers upstream and then back to the initial position. the speed of river water is 4 km per hour that means when the water is flowing with this speed you have to find the time taken to travel 8 km upstream and then back that means if the boat travels suppose from a position a to the position b upstream means v bar and u bar are in opposite directions as it moves from a to b the boat is said to be moving upstream when the direction of motion of the boat is opposite to the direction of the velocity of the river water so when it is returning back it will be moving downstream then both v bar and u bar will be in the same direction here v bar represents the velocity of the boat relative to water and u bar is the velocity of water so in general magnitude of the displacement is equal to magnitude of the resultant velocity into time taken so time taken can be written as magnitude of the displacement by magnitude of the resultant velocity so the total time taken the required time is called time taken to travel upstream plus time taken to travel same distance downstream so when it moves upstream v bar and u bar are in opposite directions so magnitude of the resultant velocity here we are represent the magnitude of the resultant velocity of the boat means we are represents magnitude of the velocity with which the boat moves with respect to stationary observer on the earth then in the first case when it is moving upstream magnitude of the resultant velocity will be equal to v minus u when it moves back it travels same distance yes downstream that means both v bar and u bar are in the same direction therefore magnitude of the resultant velocity means magnitude of the actual velocity of the boat as seen by the stationary observer on one of the banks will be plus u now here s is given to be 8 km v equal to 8 km per hour u is equal to 4 km per hour then if you simplify this you get the answer in hours if for want you can convert into minutes 
You want to copy down the solution of the problem, you can take a pause and copy down the solution of this problem. Look at the question number three. A boat having a speed of five kilometer per hour in still water crosses a river of width one kilometer along the shortest distance path in 15 minutes. The velocity of the river water in kilometer per hour is. Already, might have tried this problem. Now we can look at the solution of this problem. Width of the river is given as 1 kilometer and speed of the boat in still water is 5 kilometer per hour. And time taken to cross the river along the minimum distance path is given as 15 minutes. That will be 15 by 60 hours or 1 by 4 hour. If you remember the conclusion I have discussed in the special cases, this problem comes under case 2. Here you are asked to find the velocity of the river water. I denote the velocity of the river water by you. As I discussed in the special case 2, that means this problem comes under special case 2 in boat crossing the river. When the boat or swimmer crosses the river along the shortest distance path, then the time taken to cross the river is given by t equal d by root of v square minus u square. So you can substitute the given values here. On the left hand side t equal to 1 by 4 hour width d equal to 1 kilometer. You can use either capital D or small d here for width of the river. Is given as 1 kilometer and V is given to be 5 kilometer per hour. So you can simplify this yourself. You get the answer as U equal to 3 kilometer per hour. Suppose by chance you don't remember this conclusion, you should be able to solve it by using logic and reasoning. The figure shows the bed of the river, that means this is the direction of the flow of river water. This is one bank of the river. This is the other bank of the river. Let O be the initial position of the boat on one bank of the river. Let A be the exactly opposite point on the other bank of the river. So the velocity of the river water is to the right side here, U bar. The boat moves along the shortest distance path, means along the line OA. The resultant of V bar and U bar is directed towards the opposite point A on the other bank. Here V bar represents the velocity of the boat relative to water. Or you can say V is the magnitude of the velocity of the boat in still water. So the resultant of V bar and U bar should be directed towards the opposite point A. So for that, V bar must be directed at some angle alpha with the width of the river. 
so the resultant velocity must be in this direction that we are you know the magnitude of the resultant velocity so if you complete the parallelogram by representing v bar and u bar graphically by the adjacent sets of parallelogram and the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through the point of intersection represent the resultant of v bar and u bar so here v r bar represents the resultant of v bar and u bar that means v r bar represents the resultant velocity of the boot means v r bar represents the velocity of the boot as seen by the stationary observer on one of the banks so for the stationary observer on one of the bank the boot moves along the path o a here d is the width of the river so actual distance covered by the boat while crossing the river in this case same as the width of the river because the boat moves along the minimum distance path from boat to a the actual distance covered can be written as magnitude of the resultant velocity into time taken d is the width of the river which is given to be 1 km the time taken is given to 15 minutes or 15 by 60 hours so you get magnitude of the resultant velocity as 4 km per hour now we can observe that the three velocities v bar u bar and v r bar they can form a right angle triangle here in the parallelogram opposite sides are equal so i can show the same vectors like this this is v bar this is u bar here this is v r bar you can also show u bar here so the three vectors v r bar v bar and u bar can be represented along the sides of a triangle here right angle triangle so resultant velocity v r bar is perpendicular to u bar length of the hypotenuse side gives you mod of v bar so if you apply pythagoras theorem can write v square equal to v r square plus u square So in this equation, we can substitute v equal to five kilometer per hour, and v r equal to four kilometer per hour, and you can simplify it yourself to get the answer. You get the same answer. If you want to copy the solution, you can take a pause and copy the solution. then we'll see the next question next look at the question number 4 the river is flowing from west to east at a speed of 5 meters a man on the south bank of river capable of swimming at 10 meters per minute in still water wants to swim across the river in shortest time he should swim in a direction so this fellow comes under one of the special cases i discussed that is special case 1 in boat crossing the river as i discussed here the time taken by the boat or swimmer to cross the river will be minimum when v bar is perpendicular to u bar that means when v bar means the velocity of the swimmer relative to water is perpendicular to u bar then the time taken to cross the river will be minimum so here the man is initial on south bank of the river the river water is flowing from west to east so he should swim towards north you can just look at the figure here 
So I have shown the situation in the diagram. This is the one of the what this is the east direction to the right side, west, north, south. This is the south bank of the river, this is the opposite bank, this is the north bank of the river. This is the velocity of the water. Why the initial position of the swimmer on one bank of the river? A is exactly up to the point and the other bank. U bar is the velocity of the river water, and V bar is the velocity of the swimmer relative to water. In the general case, we assume this angle between V bar and U bar of theta. The velocity of the river water will not have a component along the width V of the river. So if you resolve V bar into rectangular components along X axis and Y axis, we can choose the horizontal direction towards east as X axis and horizontal direction towards north as Y axis. Then Y component of the velocity resultant velocity will be equal to v sin theta. So displacement in the y direction is equal to y component of velocity into time taken. So displacement in the y direction when the swimmer just crosses the river and reaches the other bank will be equal to width of the river. That is equal to v sin theta into t. So the time taken to cross the river will be inversely related to sin theta. This we have already discussed. I have already discussed this part in the past in one of the special cases. So time taken is minimum when sine theta is maximum. So time taken is minimum when sine theta is maximum. Maximum value of sine theta equal to 1. So t is minimum when sine theta equal to 1 or theta equal to 90 degrees. That means theta equal 90 degrees means V bar must be directed straight across the river perpendicular to U bar. That means the man must swim towards, the man should start swimming towards north to cross the river in minimum time. Okay, next I would like to go to the next question. See the question number five. Two particles having position vectors R1 bar equal 3i bar plus 5j bar meter. And R2 bar equal to minus 5i bar. R2 bar equal to minus 5i bar minus 3j bar meter are moving with velocities. V1 bar equal to 4i bar plus 3j bar meter per second and v2 bar equal to ai bar plus 7j bar meter per second. They collide after 2 seconds. The value of a is, come and look at the solution of this problem. Hmm. So let us suppose A is the initial position of the first particle with position vector R1 bar. Let O be the origin of the coordinate system. Let B be the initial position of the second particle with position vectors R2 bar. Let us suppose the two particles collide with each other at some point P. That means the first particle moves from A to P before collision. S1 bar is the displacement of the first particle. The second particle moves from B to P before collision. S2 bar is a displacement of the second particle in the given time interval before collision. But at the instant of collision, the final position P is same for both the particles. 
सो यू कैन राइट वो ए बार प्लस ए पी बार इज इक्वल टू वो पी बार दैट यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट एज वो बी बार प्लस बी पी बार फ्रॉम ट्राइंगल ऑफ एक्टोरिशन वो पी बार रिप्रेजेंट द पोजिशन वेक्टर इन द फाइनल पोजिशन एट द इंस्टेंट ऑफ कोल्यूजन आफ्टर टू सेकेंड so that is same for both so y bar you can write r1 bar ap bar represent the displacement of the first particle which you can write velocity of the first particle into time interval assuming that each particle here we moves with uniform velocity of course it is given that v1 bar is constant v2 bar is also a constant because a is a constant here so each particle moves with constant velocity the two particles move with different constant velocities so that can be written as op bar that is op bar you can write r2 bar bp bar is the displacement of second particle which you can write v2 bar into t so therefore we can substitute the given values here we'll equate the first and last so r1 bar is given as 3i bar plus 5j bar meter v1 bar is given to be 4i bar plus 3j bar meter into time interval is 2 seconds that can be equated to r2 bar is minus 5i bar minus 3j bar plus v2 bar into t v2 bar you can write a i bar plus 7j bar into t is 2 seconds you can simplify this so here 3i bar plus 5j bar Plus 8i bar plus 6j bar equal to. We'll collect the like terms here. Minus 5i bar plus 2a i bar. That is minus 5 plus 2a into i bar. Minus 3j bar plus 14j bar. 14 minus 3 that is 11 j bar so you can equate the x components here so on the left hand side you get 11 i bar plus 11 j bar equal to minus 5 plus 2 a into i bar plus 11 j bar so you can equate the x components here you get minus 5 plus 2a equal to 11 from this you get 2a equal 11 plus 5 or 16 or a equal to 16 by 2 or 8 so that's the answer So, if you want to copy the solution of this problem, you can take a pause and copy the solution of this problem. Now, next is the question number six. A gun mounted on the top of a moving truck is aimed in the backward direction, an angle of 60 degrees to the vertical. the muzzle velocity of the bullet is 10 meter per second the speed of the truck that will make the bullet come out vertically is so you might have already tried this problem or at least copied the problem Look at the solution of this problem. Now look at the question number six. Let u be the 
speed of truck and v is the muzzle velocity of the bullet means v is the v is the mag magnitude of the muzzle velocity of the bullet means speed of bullet relative to the gun which is fixed to the truck the speed of the gun should be taken as speed of the truck the gun is fixed at the rear end of the truck in the backward direction so the actual velocity of the bullet as seen by stationary observer on the ground will be the resultant of v bar and u bar so to make the bullet to come out vertically the resultant of v bar and u bar must be vertically upwards so here we can construct a parallelogram by representing u bar and v bar by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram so the tail of u bar is attached to tail of v bar here u bar is the velocity of the truck v bar is the velocity of the bullet relative to the gun fixed to the truck or you can say v bar is the velocity relative to the truck so actual loss of the bullet with respect to stationary observer on the ground is the resultant of v bar and u bar which should be directed vertically upwards then the bullet will come out vertically upwards in a parallelogram opposite sides are equal so this length of this side is also equal to u so in this right angle triangle length of the side opposite to the angle 60 degrees is u length of the hypotenuse side is v therefore sin 60 degrees you can write u by v or you get u equal to v sin 60 degrees and you are given v to be 10 meter per second sin 60 degrees is root 3 by 2 so get the answer as pi root 3 meter per second in case you want to copy the solution of the problem you can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem launch travels downstream from position p to another position and travels back from q to p in 1 hour what is the time taken to travel downstream from p to q when the engine is cut off question number 7 is exactly similar to the first question i have discussed already so you have to repeat the same procedure that means here t1 is 30 minutes t2 is 1 hour 1 hour means you can take 60 minutes as i when the engine is cut off the launch travels downstream with the flow of water when the engine is cut off the launch travels downstream with the same velocity which with the water flows so if t1 is the time taken to travel downstream and t2 is the time taken to travel upstream for the same distance then the time taken to travel downstream with the speed of water as i discussed in the question number 1 given by t equal to 2t1 t2 whole divided by t2 minus t1 we can again go through the solution of the first problem as it is same method you have to repeat for this question then you will get the answer see the question number 8 to a man walking at the rate of 4 km per hour the rain appears to fall vertically if the observed velocity of the rain is 4 root 3 km per hour then the inclination of the actual velocity of the rain with the vertical will be look at the solution of this problem so 
see the question number 8 it is given that the man walks with a speed of 4 km per hour understood that the man walks in the horizontal direction along a level road the rain appears to fall vertically downwards with a velocity of per route km per hour that means relative velocity of the rain the relative velocity of the rain with respect to the man is per route km per hour vertically downwards now the relative velocity of the rain with respect to the man now relative velocity in with respect to the man vector difference of actual velocity of the rain and velocity of the man here vm bar is the velocity of the man vr bar represent actual loss of rain drops v rel bar represents relative velocity of the rain with respect to the man if you take minus vm bar to the right side up to the other side so actual velocity of the rain drops is denoted by vr bar you can take minus vm bar to the left side of this will be the vector sum of vm bar and v rel bar that means the vector sum or resultant of the two given velocities gives you the actual velocity of the rain drops let us suppose the man is walking to the right side that means vm bar is directed towards right here v rel bar v rel bar means relative velocity of rain drops is directed vertically downwards the diagram is in the vertical plane here the figure is in the vertical plane so just as you studied in the parallelogram law of addition vectors if two vectors p bar and q bar are represented graphically by the adjacent sides of parallelogram such that the tail of p bar is attached to tail of q bar the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through their point of intersection represents p bar plus q bar here in place of p bar you have vm bar in place of q bar you have vrl bar so you can complete the rectangle by representing these two vectors by the adjacent sides and the diagonal of the rectangle represents p bar plus q bar that is vm bar plus v rl bar vm bar plus v rl bar gives you vr bar that means this diagonal represents the actual loss of rain drops which makes some angle <coughs> alpha with the vertical and we have a rectangle here because the two given vectors are perpendicular opposite sides are equal so this side is also equal to vm bar so in this right angle triangle tan alpha equal to length of the side opposite angle alpha divided by length of the hypotenuse side length of the side opposite angle alpha gives you magnitude of vm bar or vm that is the magnitude of the velocity of the man length of the side adjacent to the angle alpha 
gives you the magnitude of the relative velocity. So V m is given to four kilometer per hour. V r e l is given to four root three kilometer per hour. So you get. tan alpha equal to 1 by root 3 so you get alpha equal to 30 degrees that means actual velocity of the rain drops makes an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical suppose the man is moving towards right that means actual velocity of the rain drops is an angle of 30 degrees with the vertical from behind So those who want to copy the solution of the problem, they can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem. Otherwise, you can look at the next question. See the question number nine. Similar problem I have discussed in the past, in the earlier in triangle of addition vectors. But still, look at this question. Force is five newton, comma twelve newton, and thirteen newton are in equilibrium. If sine twenty-three degrees equal to five by thirteen, the angle between five newton and thirteen newton force is. Come on, look at the solution of this problem. Now let F1 bar and F2 bar and F3 bar denote the three forces. Magnitude of the first force is 5 newtons. The magnitude of second force is 12 newtons. The magnitude of third force is 13 newtons. It is given that the three forces are in equilibrium. given that the three forces are in equilibrium so the vector sum of f1 bar f2 bar and f3 bar equal to 0 bar and you can observe that the magnitudes of the three forces satisfy the condition of pythagoras theorem in the right angle triangle that means if you square the magnitudes of the smaller forces f1 and f2 and add the square of the magnitude of smaller forces that comes out to be One sixty-nine newton square. That is square of the magnitude of third force. That means you can observe that sum of the squares of the magnitudes of the first two forces is equal to square of the magnitude of third force. Therefore, we can conclude that the three forces form a right angle triangle. The largest of the three forces is F three bar. Can be represented along the hypotenuse side. The smaller forces are perpendicular to each other. As we have discussed, one conclusion based on triangle of addition of vectors: if the magnitude of the vector sum or resultant of three non-parallel vectors becomes zero, then the three vectors can be graphically represented. by the three sides of the triangle all taken in the same order so here f1 bar is perpendicular to f f2 bar so you can try to represent the three forces graphically along the three sides of the triangle 
all taken the same order that means head of first force f1 bar is attached to tail of second force f2 bar and head of the second force f2 bar should be attached to tail of third force f3 bar and head of the third force f3 bar is attached to the tail of the first force f1 bar so this is 90 degrees so you are given that find 23 degrees is 5 by 13 that is 5 newton by 13 newton 5 by 13 that means f1 by f3 let us call this particular angle here as theta 1 this angle as theta 2 this is theta 2 that is theta 1 so in this right angle triangle you can observe that 5 by 13 you will get if you divide f1 with f3 f1 by f3 is equal to sine of this angle theta 1 this angle i am calling as theta 1 this is theta 2 sin theta 1 is equal to length of side opposite to theta 1 divided by length of hypotenuse side length of side opposite to theta 1 gives you f1 length of hypotenuse side gives you f3 so you can write sin theta 1 is equal to f1 by f3 f1 is 5 newton F3 is 30 newton. So you get sine theta 1 equal 5 by 13. So given that sine 23 degrees is 5 by 13 in the problem, so theta 1 you can take it as 23 degrees. You can observe in the right angle triangle some of the angles theta 1 and theta 2. Plus 90 degrees will be equal to 180 degrees. Some of the three internal angles at the three vectors of any triangle is 180 degrees. So you get theta 2 equal to 90 degrees minus theta 1 or 90 degrees minus 23 degrees. So theta 2 is 67 degrees. They are asked to find the angle between 5 Newton force and 30 Newton force. That means you are asked to find the angle between F1 bar and F3 bar. As I discussed in the past, to know the angle between two vectors, the two vectors must be graphically drawn from the same point such that tail of one vector attached to the tail of other vector. You can draw given vector graphical at different place in diagram it, without changing its magnitude diagram. So you can represent F3 bar in this way. So the tail of F3 bar is attached to tail of F1 bar. So this will be the angle between F3 bar and F1 bar. So angle between F3 bar and F1 bar is equal to 180 degrees minus theta 2. Means 180 degrees minus 67 degrees. That will be 113 degrees. That's the answer. So you are asked to find the angle between 5 Newton force and 30 Newton force. That is this particular angle. That is 180 degrees minus theta 2. That will be 130 degrees will be the answer. But sometimes you may be asked to the angle between 12 Newton force and 13 Newton force. That means the angle between F2 bar and F3 bar. By using similar reasoning, I mean if you attach the tail of F2 bar with the tail of F3 bar, the angle between F2 bar and F3 bar will be 180 degrees minus theta 1. 
of course you are not asked to find the angle between f2 bar and f3 bar but in case you are asked to find that particular angle then you should be able to find that will be 180 degrees minus the tau that means in that case in case you are asked for that particular angle angle between f2 bar and f3 bar means angle between 12 newton force and 13 newton force will be 180 degrees minus theta 1 or 180 degrees minus 23 degrees it will be 157 degrees of course for the given question answer is 113 degrees those who want to copy the solution of the problem they can take a pause and copy the solution of the problem otherwise look at the solution of the next problem see the question number 10 choose the wrong statement three vectors of different magnitudes may be combined to give a zero resultant the first statement is correct one suppose if three vectors have different magnitudes and if they can be graphically represented along the three sides of a triangle all taken in the same order then the magnitude of the resultant becomes zero so that means it is possible that it's given as may means it is possible that three vectors of different magnitudes may produce a zero resultant so in the second statement two vectors of different magnitudes can be combined to give a zero resultant that's not possible the resultant of two vectors a bar and b bar becomes zero that is a bar plus b bar becomes zero only when the two vectors a bar and b bar have same magnitude but act in opposite directions that means vector sum or resultant of two vectors can be a zero vector only when the two vectors have same magnitude but act in opposite directions that means two vectors of different magnitudes cannot be produce a zero resultant therefore second statement is wrong if you look at the third statement the product of a scalar and a vector is a vector quantity that is a true that's all about the question number 10 so the next question that is starting from 11th question to that probably up to 20th 20th question or next questions i will be discussing in my next class